Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Past Life, Present Power with Derek Jameson. In this episode, I meet with Matthew Dennis Lewis, who is an actor in projects that you've seen on Netflix called Godless and The Queen's Gambit. And today we talk about his past life regression, what he learned about some of his experiences, what he learned about himself, and also seeing the dark parts of us that we all carry and what to do with it. It's quite a profound experience, and he is here to share how his his experience helps his life and what he's doing in this lifetime as we reflect on his past lifetimes. So I hope you join us and I hope you enjoy this episode of Past Life Present Power with Derek Jameson. Hey, Matt, how's it going today? Hey, it's going good. I'm enjoying my Sunday, relaxing with Asher. And uh, my brother Josh flies in in a few hours for his birthday, so I'm excited for that. Oh, I love that. Well, thanks for meeting with me on your Sunday to go over uh, your past life regression that you had with me a few years ago, actually. And uh, But before we get into your past life regression, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do, any, any information uh, just to get our audience to get to learn about you. Sure. A quick rundown of that. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York. I was one of four boys. Um, we had lots of fun playing outside and being adventurous. And I think that's what kind of led to the creative aspect that Russ and I developed that led us into our acting careers. Uh, we both moved to New York to pursue that and then made the big jump to LA. So here we are. We have no regrets. We've been working and happy and working on some amazing projects. Now, you were recently in The Queen's Gambit on Netflix and also before that, Godless on Netflix with your brother, correct? Correct. Yeah. Amazing. And how was that experience, um, you know, with your journey and where you guys are going? Uh, how does that feel that you moved out to L.A. and you were able to get into huge projects like that? Well, both were amazing, um, but for separate reasons. Firstly, Godless was the first time that we both had the opportunity to work together as twins. And it was an amazing experience uh, to work on a Western is like a dream come true, you know, playing Cowboys and Indians when you're growing up and then it becomes real life. But the connections that we made on that set are what led to Queen's Gambit. We developed a really good relationship with Scott Frank, the writer and director, and that spawned into him inviting us back to work on the Queen's Gambit. And that was an amazing experience because we got to travel overseas and work with amazing people and live in Berlin for three months. So it was just an amazing experience. And I think that's what really is exciting about our career is you never know where it will take you, where it will lead you, you know, where you're going to be filming one day to the next. You know, what's interesting about that is I believe that we're drawn to different places in the world, either by desire or things are just the universe sets it up for us that we're connected to past lives uh, with. And sometimes that can be places that have heavy energy or uh, powerful energy or just strong emotional attachments and events. Uh, the universe finds a way to bring us to those past life connections. Do you believe that some of these connections uh, with the people that you're working with, of course, with your brother and uh, the places that you've led to have something to do with past lives? Uh, I think definitely so, especially, you know, when you're talking about certain pieces like Godless, where it was a Western, you're being in that visceral landscape and on the horses and being a part of it all. It felt as if I was reliving something I've lived before. It didn't feel like a new experience. It felt like something that's always been, including riding horses. It was just something that came very natural to me. Uh, that's why Russ and I got to do, like all of our own riding in the show was because we were able to pick that up so quickly. And I didn't think about it until you just mentioned it, but also that definitely takes place with the, us filming in Germany because one of my past lives actually took place in Nazi Germany. Uh, so I don't know if you remember that part of it, but yeah, so that was one of my past lives. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's why I, I strongly believe that when we're led somewhere, especially when it's not in our control, but we're just put in a position to be somewhere, um, there is a stronger influence about past life connections, what is called soul retrieval, where we might have left a, an aspect of our soul through a traumatic or emotional time. And a part of our energy is in that place. And when we're drawn back to a place, we're able to kind of pick that energy up uh, and reintegrate it back into us so that we can uh, almost complete our soul in its ascension journey. So I think it's really interesting that that began to come back around. And it just goes to show you how past life regressions and past life connections can come back at, in ways that you don't even realize. Because when you had that vision, you didn't even put it together that you were in that place at the, at, at, until now. So mm -hmm. these things come in layers. And I think that's just such an incredible journey and uh, very cool for people to hear that you make in the moment revelations from past life experiences into this modern present day that you're living now. So it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Especially being in Germany, when we would visit the Holocaust museums and stuff, obviously that's a very sad and heavy subject, but the, the energy felt more real and visceral than just a surface level, oh, this is sad because it was terrible. So there was a feeling of deeper connection to that. Yeah. So that said, why did you wanna have a past life regression? What, what interested you about even knowing what a past life was at the time that you did it? Well, growing up, I always felt in connection with nature, elements, things that couldn't be explained, um, the supernatural. Uh, so, growing up and finding myself through you know spiritual development and trying to find better understanding of the universe and how things are i wanted to understand why certain things that didn't make sense actually made sense like why do people that come into our lives feel like we've known them forever or why does that picture have such an emotional reaction like do, why do i have such an emotional reactions like that picture uh, and stuff like that so that was one of the main reasons. And then secondly, I wanted to just delve into, you know, what else I am connected to and link it to things that are going on with myself, both physically and emotionally in my life. Definitely. And that's exactly, it's never one answer. It's multiple things that draw us into being curious about past lives, or even if people don't know if they're real or not, if this is the only life, there's still something that draws people to movies or places or things that give them the idea that it's possible. So mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. So out of your experience with your past life regression, yours was a very, yours had the, of course, non-physical components of being able to see visions visions and go through the experience, but you also had a physical experience too, which we'll get to. Now, when you were seeing the visions, what did it look like? Did it look like you were walking through it or did it look like you were watching a movie? Like what it was, it, what did it look like to you? It was as if watching a movie, but it was from first person. So if I was to look down, I would see my hands and the rest of my body as if it was connected to me, even though it wasn't what I currently physically have in this life. Sure. And that's one of the main ways that people have experienced these lives, except for sometimes people get to pull back and see a different perspective of it because they need to see the whole picture. Other people will trust that they're in it and they can get the information. It's really based off of the higher self, what your oversoul and the, the beings that work with you want you to see and how you're going to receive the information. So it's amazing. What was your past life regression visions like? What was something, you can say a few of the lives, you can say one, it's up to you. What came forward for you that stands out that you would like to share? Well, firstly, I went in and saw myself, I felt myself first as just warmth. And then I could see myself as a glow. And that's when I realized that I was as sourced energy and which we later talked about and discussed that I actually go back to source energy a lot because I'm comfortable there. And I like to go back between like incarnations. So that was like one of the first things that I saw. But secondly was that life in Nazi Germany. And it began with me hiding out in like a dark kind of like structure with vehicles in it. And I was hiding in the back of a, a truck. And at first I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, what am I doing in the back of this truck? And then it started to travel and I was like hiding. 
Um, and I remember like peeking out to see like the road and where we were going. Uh, but as that life went on, um, I realized that I was, you know, in Nazi Germany and I had told on my neighbors that were Jewish. And the result of that was um, the Germans coming and burning their house to the ground and killing my neighbors. And I remember I was like so stricken with guilt in that life that I walked into the house and killed myself burning. Um, and it was such a bizarre experience because I could feel the flames and I knew what was happening, um, but I wasn't in pain. But I understood like, oh, I am burning and this is me dying. Um, and so that was from the guilt I had from telling on them. How does it feel to see, because a lot of people have issues with knowing that they, they don't want to see that they were bad. They don't want to know that there's a darker part of them in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to see those darker polarities in a lifetime that we ha are connected to, um, to integrate that shadow side. So why do you think you were, why, how did it make you feel to see that you, that you did that? Uh, definitely guilty. Uh, it made me feel like not a good person. And especially in this life, um, like I would like to believe that I do a lot of good for others and, you know, I'm always helping when I can and going out of my way. So to see the exact opposite of that and knowing that, you know, I took away someone's life just because of who they were, uh, it was, it was pretty heavy, but I mean, it showed, it just showed a part of you that everyone has. You know, everyone is, well, their life has probably told on someone and gotten someone in trouble, regardless of whether it was worth it or not, you know, so. So why would you see something like that? And if it made you feel guilty, how do you come to peace with Matthew knowing that and having the guilt that you felt as Matthew now? How do you like knowing that you could have done something? How do you integrate that kind of that kind of experience or energy? I think the only way to integrate it is just to accept that, you know, given what we go through with all of our lives and past lives is that you do have to play different roles at different times uh, because it, they are lessons for everyone involved, whether it turns out good or bad, um, the lesson has to be learned so that everyone can grow from it. And is that what you learned from that seeing that particular lifetime or are there multiple lessons or what did you take? What was the lesson and purpose from that experience? I think the lesson and purpose for that, you know, was compassion, you know, don't judge people for what they are, you know, learn to love everyone. Like no one deserves to die like that, especially. Um, so we should do what we can, you know, to, be more peaceful and love everyone instead of that. Uh, so you also had the, what's coming forward for me is the other lifetime that was associated with um, kind of like the opposite of that in the way of the military. It was like a future because, you know, and some people that go, well, how can you envision the future uh, that don't understand the quantum reality, the quantum field of everything existing all at once. And that's how you were tapping into those lives from the past or the future is that everything exists all at once. It's just that your vibration is tuning into specific things that you need. So you saw a past lifetime in our linear experience, but you also saw a future war in which you were a part of as like a military person now and and you know it's it's good to talk about that because people do think like well then it can't be real because it's a future it's a future timeline mm -hmm. but we must expand our awareness into the fact that we live in a quantum reality where everything exists all at once all of it we're just tuned into certain things so tell us a little bit about that future war uh, where it was kind of like the the opposite of that instead of incriminating people you were trying to save people and seeing a really complete juxtaposition of those two things mm -hmm. uh, which are so different from each other so why tell us about that experience what you saw and what you took from it uh yeah that one was very intense um I remember it opened up just in the heat of battle. There was no leading up to it. There was no like, I'm getting out of bed and this is where I'm going. It literally, I appeared in the middle of battle and all of my fellow soldiers and comrades were just being obliterated around me, but we couldn't, I couldn't see at the time what we were fighting. 
because there was so much dust kicked up in the air. So all I could see was like a thick brown dust, maybe like the people who were next to me. And then these blue lasers would cut through the dust. And that's what the weapons they were using were. Um, and there would be both like pulses that would be shooting like as like laser type bullets and as well just lasers like that were cutting like blades. Um, and I remember like just screaming, crying physically myself while going through that past life um, when I was speaking out loud. Um, but it was just crazy to see all the friends dying and what we were trying to do. And then by the time I did see what they were, they were giant like robotic, like not like creatures, but it was almost like like robots that the people themselves were in. So they were controlling like these mecha like suits basically. Um, but that we were definitely way out of our league. They were more technically or tech technologically advanced than we were and our weaponry just couldn't hold up with it. So we were being obliterated. Uh, and then from there we moved into what the best moment of my life was from that life. Um, and so it took me away from the heat of the battle. And I remember seeing a little girl with like long brown hair up in a ponytail and she had a little bow in it and her back was to me. And um, I looked around her and it was her birthday and she was probably like five years old. And <laughs> this part always makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's such a real emotional part of your experience. So that's, and it does make people emotional when they tune into, you can't help it, you know? So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so weird, <sighs> but no, um, so it was her birthday and um, I was just looking at the back of her and uh, just knowing that I had to leave again. So I just like kind of took in that moment um, and enjoyed watching her like blow out her candles and stuff. Um, but that was like very short lived. And immediately almost we went right back into battle, uh, which was the end of it for me. Um, we were driving in like a Humvee, uh, heading back towards the battle to finish it. And on the way, um, we hit a landmine on my side of the vehicle um, and blew up. And so I remember just laying there staring off at the horizon like as the sun was setting um knowing that that was the end of my life and that's how we died so and that was intense now you had emotional reactions to people that showed up now sometimes in past life regressions people don't show up for other people or there's not other people they just have to see specific scenes or things unfold they don't actually know people and then sometimes people have people in their past life visions that end up being other people in this particular incarnation. Was there anyone from either that lifetime or the other lifetimes that you saw or experienced uh, that are part of this lifetime or no? I don't remember. No, no one that really stood out. Um, they all felt like very like authentic people that I have known um, in those lives, but that I haven't met in this life probably yet. Um, possibly still could, but no, at that time, no. Why do you think, why do you think you weren't shown people that you uh, know now? Like, why did it look like, why was this, there was no connection to anybody? Do you have an idea? I don't know. Um, I think maybe I've delved into this a little bit on my own and uh, just like looking into some of my past lives and other feelings that I've, you know, received and uh, some of the other past life meditations that we've done. And like one common thing that I often find is that even though I'm with a group of people or doing this or that, my, my person tends to kind of be a lone wolf um, and just doing what they need to do, which is usually protecting people. So I think that's why they all kind of tend to be that way. And it's always kind of new people. And that's interesting you bring that of protecting people in this military energy because you have played a role in, in the past where you were portraying that. And it's interesting because it's like 
I believe that actors, musicians, artists, anyone who creates in that way, I mean, even people who are creating buildings, really, they are channeling energy, just like I channel energy when I work with people and you're in a past life, you're channeling the energy from your own Akashic records. So when it comes to a military role or doing something with godless and you're playing twins who are not very kind and mm. go kill people, it's, it's, it's like you're tuning into aspects of yourself from other lifetimes and reliving those lifetimes in order to like work out some things or learn something from it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool to see that you would um, like, even the stories we're talking about at one point where you incriminated people and basically had them be put to the, the chambers and, and perish. And then you had, also roles where you are protect past lives where you are protecting people now look at the roles you're playing where you in godless for example it's a role where you're taking lives and mm -hmm. you're doing that not a good vibration that you're tuning into and then in godless i mean in queen's gambit it was more about being of service and helping people and coming up together and doing something for good do you see how there's a really cool correlation between even the lives that you saw and then these these big roles that you got to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, I do. And I have started like accepting that and incorporating it into um, my characters when I am doing things now is really actually channeling that person, that emotion, that being, um, instead of just being what it says on the paper. Uh, and it does, it just feels so much more authentic. And there is so much that you can tap into you know, which just speaks more volumes to other lives lived. Like, how do you, how do you have that understanding or can understand how that experience is if you actually haven't ever done it yet make it feel so real? Yeah, that's why when I watch certain roles being portrayed, like some of these actors, like the first thing that comes to mind is Kate Blanchett when she played Queen Elizabeth. I was like, no, she is Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> like, I just like, I was like, there's no way that someone could be given that role to portray something if they didn't have the energy of that person from the past flowing through them. And that goes for a lot of things that we see out there. I mean, even people want to think mythological roles like Thor mm -hmm. um, and Chris Hemsworth playing Thor. That's because he has the frequency that carries that energy that would portray the story the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I honestly believe that, you know, even they are tuning into their past lives if they are not even fully aware that they're doing it, you know? Yeah. And there are so many characters like that where you look at it and you're like, no, this was written for them. Like this role had to be them. It couldn't have been anybody else. Well, you bring up a good point about some of the person that you got inspired by to get into acting mm -hmm. as well, right? Which was yeah. Andy from Spartacus. Yeah, Andy Whitfield, yeah. And so we'll t just touch on that a second. I mean, at that point in my life, you know, just because of different reasons, I kind of got out of acting and started a different passion of mine, which was always martial arts. And I became a competitive kickboxer and did Muay Thai. And I fought competitively out of New York City. And at a point in my life where I was debating whether I should, you know, go more professional with the kickboxing and make that my lifestyle, which at best maybe would have had 10 good years or moved to LA and actually continued to pursue what I moved to New York originally for. And at that time, I discovered Spartacus on TV and fell in love with the series. And I, it just made me realize I can do both of my passions because the acting in the series was phenomenal. The fight scenes in this, the series was phenomenal. And it just really inspired me to be like, well, that's what I could be doing right there. I can be doing everything I love to do wrapped up in one. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and it's, and it's good to tune into that because as you're tuning into that and that energy is a lifetime you're also connected to. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that certain celebrities and people who are put in the limelight create the awakening for us that even that is a, an Akashic record. Mm -hmm. Even if we never meet these people in our person like this, it's like our role energetically was they were like, I'm going to be doing this and it's gonna inspire you to do this too. And you're gonna feel really connected to me because we are connected. And so you bring up a really good point about how even if people aren't 
fully engaged with another person or know them personally, it doesn't mean that the energetic agreement, the Akashic agreement is any less powerful, mm -hmm. you know, because that one person put in the limelight also affects all of these other timelines of people all at once. So it's actually very much bigger than in even one-to-one -one connection. You know, the, the, the activation is deeper. Yeah. So I love that. Now I do want to go into, we touched on the fact that you had a very physical experience and mm -hmm. that is touching on the lifetime of the war. Now yeah. I do remember that part. That was in like 2018, but I remember when you, um, you were like the explosion happened and then you were basically out looking at like a horizon or the sun setting, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we and you weren't you were trying to figure out what was going on at that moment, and it was obvious that now you had transitioned because of that explosion. But mm -hmm. what happened physically with you um, that you experienced? Now, when physical things are very rare and uncommon, when it comes to the body remembering these things, but mm -hmm. you we're obviously holding on to heavy related trauma emotionally from this lifetime that you were carrying into this one. So what was your experience? What was so physical about it? Yeah, well, I think first to start this is one of the physical reasons why I wanted to do the past life was, you know, in hopes of the development of a physical healing because I did have really bad neck pain and like, I always thought it was from kickboxing, like just an injury that was never going to get better. And it was, it was like, as if you like just slept wrong, but it was like a really bad knot. And, you know, there were days when I would have to like turn my whole body because I just couldn't turn my neck. And so in this lifetime, after we exploded, I remember telling you like, okay, I'm very hot. I'm very hot, which was interesting because I walked into the house of fire and wasn't like, oh, I'm very hot, I'm very hot. But this time I felt like really hot and like I could feel it in my physical self. And after coming out of the regression, I had noticed that I had red markings on my body that almost looked like scars. And it was so interesting because they were on the side of my body, which would have been the side the explosion occurred on. So up my right side, I had like red almost they look like scratches. And like, when I explain this to people, sometimes like, oh, well, maybe it's from how you're laying and this and that. And I was like, no, I was laying on my back. Yeah. Like, so there's no way I would have marks up my side. And then I had red marks that came up my chest almost as if something blunt force like filleted me right there. And then the, to me, the most incredible marking was a handprint that was literally like seared onto my shoulder. Uh, which I could only think of as two possibly th two possible things. Either one, it was one of my fellow soldiers reaching over to me in those last moments, you know, and that was imprinted on me, or it was angelic and it was some form of angelic touch, you know, as I was going through that moment. But I remember, like, they were <laughs> they were definitely there. Like, you couldn't mistake it. It wasn't like, oh, you laid on your side or something. Uh, but then within probably about a half hour, they had disappeared and they were gone. But with that, also the pain in my neck was gone. And to this day, I've never had that pain again. And I'm so thankful for that. And you were saying like, yeah, it was like 2018, I think. So it's been years now and yeah. I've never, I've never experienced that pain again. So I think a lot of that was healed in that traumatic blast of when probably I was hit with huge tons of like percussive force you know so and that's the important part is of seeing some of these experiences is that you don't know that you're carrying that with you until the experience until you go through the experience and you uh, give yourself the gift of really seeing what some of your um the guilt we might carry or shame or pain or traumas or why we feel like we have to save people all the time or why we have to do something all of the time. And you realize that it's such a physical imprint that you were carrying around the burden of that experience with you. And it wanted to be cleared. And this was the lifetime in which your consciousness was going to be at a level to be able to receive a clearing, be able to see that mirror reflection of that experience and allow it to clear. Um, and it took this time of you being willing 
uh, to receive that and to receive love in that way. Um, because really, you don't want to carry all of that anymore. And, and it also plays into your daily life of, of how we can feel like we always have to save people, we have to do things for people. Um, and I believe that that opens the process of you letting go of feeling the need to always save other people when really, we're all here to save ourselves. Yeah, exactly. So you just talked about the, the, the physical remembrance. Yes, we remember that. And then um, we went into the physical healing that you received. And that was such a beautiful experience because yes, you do receive a physical healing uh, from a, a quantum healing hypnosis session. Uh, you get to see your past lives. You get to pull up that trauma, release that. And you also get to see um, that you can bring physical healing within the body. So that's just incredible. Now, what would you say? Uh, what do you want to share with people about your experience? Why, why, what do you want to share? What do you hope people take away from learning about your experience uh, during today's conversation? I mean, mostly just to be open and accepting of it. Uh, so many people kind of like disregard it because, you know, maybe they don't believe in it or any number of reasons. They just don't want to try and experience it. And to me, it was something that I was so wanting to experience that I just like try to encourage someone be like, well, what do you have, what do you actually have to lose from it? Yeah. You know? So, so that's my biggest thing. I think is just why not try if you think you could learn something about yourself or what's happening in your life at this moment or why something else happened or in the past, you know, just try to experience it and see what, what you can learn from it. Now, is having a past life regression, uh, now you've done other meditations, you've done mm -hmm. past life meditations with groups. Mm -hmm. And during those group meditations, you've also seen how every, some people are having similar lives. Mm -hmm. And we can see how people are brought together because you're having a vision that somebody else is also having, but they're playing different roles within it, right? Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. think the significance is of that? I mean, that was really interesting because one in particular, like our lives were intertwined. <laughs> um, one of the other people doing the meditation, you know, they saw themselves as a princess in this, you know, place. And I saw myself as a tiger and I was owned by this princess. And so it was really interesting to talk with her after the fact and correlate the different things that happen and how we navigated that life pretty much together and never realized it. And then we're sitting in the same room experiencing this. And the only, the only explanation for that is because we were going into it at the same time and our energy fields were connecting and overlapping that we were able to see each other together in that life. Yeah, it's quite incredible how these things layer in uh, in this way and that give you a deeper connection to some people that you don't even know that you're really connected to. Then you find yourself in the same place and then you find out that there is a deeper connection there. It might not be so heavy or need to work out any karmic stuff, but it's so fascinating to see that the people and the situations we find ourselves in also have other realities associated with them. And most often than not, with people's traumas and dramas, they are going to have other realities that have created an entanglement that are going to bring those connections back together. Mm -hmm. So, well, I totally appreciate you sharing your story with everyone. Um, maybe we'll talk about future things and other other stuff that comes forward in the future. Maybe we'll do a group thing with some of those people and talk mm -hmm. about what has come forward. Um, but I think that your sharing of, you know, what, your experience was, what you took from it, how it correlates with your career and how you're putting those things together to even channel these beings or channel the people that you were or channel an energy and allowing it, opening up so it becomes you. Because that really is truly the only way that um, you can be a pure channel of a, a role that you're playing is by opening up and being it. Like letting go of Matthew Dennis Lewis and being whoever it is that you have to portray. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much. Um, how can people find you? Like what, what's your website, social medias, all that? Yeah, well, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, and I'm 
so happy to have been able to do the past life regression to better understand myself and incorporate it into my life. Uh, for people that follow me, they can follow me on Instagram. It's at Matthew Dennis Lewis, my full name. Uh, that's primarily all I use for social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm not as active on it. And I do have a website that's www.matthewdennislewis.com, or you can just look me up on IMDb. Amazing. Well, this has been awesome. I'm sure we'll see um, things the way, even the stories that you've talked about, we will be interested to see how maybe some of the newer roles that start to unfold uh, correlate with some of these lives that you've lived mm -hmm. or things that you've seen. It's always layering in, it's always coming in at random moments when we are ready for it. The seeds get planted long before, and then when it's time, we end up seeing uh, it unfold the way mm -hmm. that it was always meant to. So I thank you so much, and I thank everybody for being here with us today. Day to talk about past lives, get a little bit of a deeper insight on how we can work with them, why they're important to us, and, um, and, and how we can expand our consciousness for the future. So thank you. Please subscribe, please follow, and please share this with anybody that you think might be interested in learning more about past lives to so the people that I have had a blessing with uh, taking into their own past lives. Thank you. This is Derek Jameson. Past life, present, power.